So the big question is this, how do most agents who struggle to get the information that most successful agents hoard to themselves grow and prosper without this information? That's the big question and this video cast is the answer. Welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. I'm your host, Pat Hyben. And now for the review of the day. Excellent information by Michelle Chow. She said, thank you for offering such incredible resource for agents. Love, 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 love this certified listing agent course. Thank you for sharing Michelle Chow Realty Partners. Michelle, congratulations. You are now a certified listing agent and you're going to crush it. If you guys want to be like Michelle and crush every single listing, go to futureofrealestatetraining.com. Keep the comments coming, guys. I love them. And remember, I eat feedback for breakfast. So give me a one-star review if you want or a five-star review if you want. I don't care. And the more reviews we get, the better guests we get. So please, subscribe first and then leave us a review or wherever you're listening. All right, Rockstar Nation, we got a great guest today. I'm excited. I got Mr. Robbie T on the line from Hatch <laughs> Coaching, and they are making some waves. They're causing a little stir in the industry because there's some old schoolers out there that say you should be picking up the phone and calling all the time, and they're like, phone calling is dead. <laughs> Mr. Fred, and uh, we are, uh, we're going to debate that and talk about all things texting mm -hmm. as a real estate agent, ISAs, mm -hmm. calls, outbound calling, you know, everything. Uh, Robbie T is known as the real estate agent lead geek, <laughs> right? And he is uh, going to be doing some geek in a day. So Mr. Yeah. Robbie T, welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. Thanks, brother. I appreciate that. I appreciate it a ton. Yeah, totally geek. And I'm wearing, I don't know if you can see it, but Star Wars shirt here. Oh, yeah, Ooh, total game. Way hipster, dude. Glasses. Way oh. hipster. Yeah, I got that. <laughs> too, so I fit. <laughs> what, what, why don't you tell everybody a little bit, bit about you? I love it, man. Great question. So uh, to kind of give everybody a background, I, I started in real estate as what's commonly known in the industry as an inside sales agent and, and ISA. Um, in, in our world, uh, I started five years ago. Um, and, and when I got uh, on the team, when I started with Eric Hatch, which I know Eric's been on the show and, and Eric is my brother and my mentor and my, you know, one of my best friends. Um, uh, he basically threw me to the wolves and <laughs> just like uh, everybody encounters in this role. Um, but what was really cool was I kind of had to carve my own niche and uh, started on Eric's team as an ISA have um, uh, in my first full year of production, my first 12 months, I brought in about 67 deals for our team. Um, and that was a combination of calling like expired, old leads that nobody else called in the database. Um, and then what happened was in, in the second year, I ballooned to 169. And uh, from that, we've built an ISA department that touches about 50 to 60% of our business, depending on the year. And uh, uh, it's, it's a fun ride, man. Uh, my expertise is all about um, mastering the conversations with leads, connecting with leads, and, and inspiring people that don't know who you are to come and work with you, uh, which is a lot more difficult, I would say, than calling up your friends that, and inspiring those people to work with you. So, yeah, the cold lead, the cold but, lead versus the warm lead. So, exactly. world of difference. I exactly. Think warm lead people, you know, agents, they, they, they're automatically magnetized to that because it is so much easier because it yes. is so much comforting because there is so much less rejection. Mm. But if you want to take your business beyond SOI, which is you're only going to be able to do, you know, 30 deals max on SOI exactly. as, as, as a single agent. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want to do it beyond that, you got to get into the cold business, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> So, um, what do you recommend um, for somebody today? Sure. Uh, before we get, before we go too deep into inside sales agents, which you know would be part of building a big team, of course. Um, that sort of thing. What do you recommend today for somebody who is, you know, maxed out, uh, maxing out on their SOI leads, and they want to mm -hmm. get into the cold business? What, 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 what? Give me some advice. Um, some advice. Uh, 
I love it. Uh, great question. So um, a lot of people are really drawn to what I call the secondary easy leads, the property inquiry leads. And that's the realtor.coms that are out there, the Zillows. And, and the funny part is, is those are easier, but your ROI is going to be a lot lower. Um, the funny part, and people are shocked when I say this, but some of the greatest ROI in our business is the pay-per-click leads that you can go and purchase. Now, uh, the reason we have, and we close them at about 4 to 5%. If we buy 100 pay-per-click leads, we generally see about 4 to 5% go to close. Um, and that, of course, depends on, on which platform, which, which uh, role we're going through. Um, I think the, the biggest thing is when you go down that road and you buy pay-per-click leads, you've you got to do two things. Um, you've got to have somebody that is going to be willing to long-term nurture these leads. The conversion cycle on a pay-per-click lead from our analytics are 18 to 24 months on average. So mm. Pat, if, if you signed up today on our website, you were a pay-per-click lead, you clicked a Google AdWords, you signed up, um, you're probably not going to buy for 18 to 24 months. And of course, there's some people that are way longer than that. Some are going to be shorter. I like to generally say just an offhand metric is if you buy pay-per-click and you could, you're good team in terms of follow-up chasing and we'll talk about what we do in a little bit um you will convert about one percent that first year and one percent conversion on ppc usually pays for itself but where the real money lies is years two three and beyond um, generally in year two we'll see another about two percent of those leads finally convert and then about another one to two percent in year three finally close give or take and i, um, I don't think most agents have that jam you know most agents don't <laughs> They don't, they can't last, you can't follow up with a freaking lead for four <laughs> years. I mean, how do you do that, right? Like how, like, like sure. but, but there's, like you said, there's money, there's an extra 3% on the table there. Um, it's all free money. It's how all, do you do that? Can you do that without having to, I mean, how do you do that? Give me some advice on, um, sure. you, know, you know, software or Absolutely. systems or, you know, what, whatever to do so, it. I, I'm obviously, uh, I'm an ISA, so I, I long-term, the long-term solution, if you want to play the PPC game well, is generally you, you need to hire someone that's going to make their, that, that their expertise um, and, and do the long-term nurture. Everybody comes to me and says, well, why can't I have my agents do it? And, and it's a great question. And, and there's really just one simple answer. It's, it will always be their second job, their part-time mm. job. And, mm. and that's not on the agents. Everybody blames the agents and they think, are you saying agents are bad, they're lazy? No. The reality is this, is that the first thing that's going to fall off when they get busy selling homes is that lead generation. And then, of right. course, you don't feel that pain for three to four months. And that is not necessarily their fault. It's the system's fault. That is why in our world, what we've built is our agents focus on production and then our ISAs focus on taking all of our company leads and turning them into appointments for our agents. Now, you don't have an ISA. We like to say you are the ISA. Um, and short term, the best thing I can tell you is you've got to have a platform or some type of tech that allows you to do things in mass. Um, we just did a whole podcast uh, on the ISA radio that was all about how our dial's dying. And really what it is is this, is that People aren't answering the phone like they used to. Um, and, and what's so crucial now is you got to be in the texting game. And you need to have a CRM that allows you to auto text and mass text. Now, the crazy part, Pat, is this, is that that's just going to start conversations traditionally for you. Okay, if you sign up on my website today, Pat, you're going to get a text um, automated through our, our CRM. And it's going to start that conversation. But once you throw the ball back at me, now we got to play catch. Again, yes. Okay, yeah, Robbie T, yeah. let me slow you down here. Cause, <laughs> cause it, sure. Okay, so, so this is good, right? Because I do think that a, a solo agent, because, you know, a lot of people, they don't want to go from no team, mm. right, no buyer agents, sure. all the way to I'm hiring a $42,000 a year employee sure. just to handle my leads, right? Sure. Yep. So in reality, I think it is possible mm -hmm. for an agent mm -hmm. to um, sign up for a CRM, Yes. that has auto texting and mass texting. Mm -hmm. So let, let's, let's, let's start with that right? um, before <laughs> yeah. we overwhelm them. And I'm sure there's some services, right? Like, like um, 
there's some services to, to cheapen the process uh, or, or maybe even get a yes. part-time ISA. I don't, do you know of any? First of so all, I, I would say the, if, if I were in those shoes, if I'm in those user shoes, I'm an independent agent, um, I can't afford to go and, and drop $40,000 on an ISA, which is a great question uh, or a great point. Um, the thing I would look at is, is there's a company that, that we've been having uh, uh, basically um, really great conversations with that we've started sending leads through even in our world called Structurally. And what Structurally does is it actually basically takes the leads and filters them down to the people that are motivated. Um, they, they try to find out those leads that are looking to um, buy a home. It filters, say, let's say you give them 100 leads, they're and it's all artificial intelligence. Uh, it's structurally, I'm sure we can post a link somewhere. I mean, that's actually who we've done our podcast with, the ISA radio. Um, what they do extremely well is it's all AI, and, and therefore it's traditionally lower cost than, than hiring an ISA. And what it does is it filters all those leads for you. That way, instead of you having to do all that outbound work, uh, Pat, what would happen is you can just talk to the five or 10 instead of trying to talk to all 100. Do you pay, do you pay per lead? Do you pay? Yes. Yeah. You pay, lead. I believe it's per lead. Yep. And, and they have all the pricing on their website. Okay. I think it's, it, it's, it's, I think the wave of the future, especially for people in the situation that you just described, it's what, so to give some perspective on how it works in, in my world, we beat the heck out of leads, Pat. Like I can't even emphasize it enough for that. Um, oh, it's, it's incredible. Some of these agents like, <laughs> I mean, I feel sorry for the leads. Right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, holy dirt. They're like, we do this and we do that. And we, <laughs> you know, it's like walking around with seven belts on it. Like, <laughs> you, know, you know, you got eight different things contacting the lead within the first 24 hours. And yep. so, so yeah. So anyway, so you can do it with structure. Now let's say yes. that, let's say you want to do it yourself and I want you mm -hmm. to teach us how to do it ourselves. So mm -hmm. we go ahead and we say, okay, this lead, you know, said, ah, not now maybe in a couple years or yep. indicated they weren't jerks. They didn't hang up on mm, us. Sure. Uh, they gave us a little bit of hope, but I know yep. I ain't getting paid this year or next year. Mm -hmm. How do I take these and put them in a system that is uh, automatic sure. with text? Yep. And uh, what does the first text say? I love it. So uh, great question. Um, this is what we do. I call these our D leads in our world. So if I use that language, it's, no, it's a D lead. It's my lowest opportunity, uh, lowest priority. What we would do is I would call you back first off, not, not every month because I don't have time, right? When you do this in mass, I'm probably, if you said you're two, three years out, and let's say it's a firm two, three years out, Pat, uh, Pat because you are retiring in two years, and that's when you're looking to sell. I'm probably going to call you back 12 months later. And then about every 45 to 60 days, you're going to get an automated text from, from one of my ISAs or, or from the person you spoke to. And honestly, it's just going to say this. Uh, it's going to say, hey, Pat, we had spoke a little while back, and I know sometimes plans change. I just wanted to see if your real estate needs have changed in the last few months. That's it. Why waste thousands of dollars and countless hours on training? that never touches on what matters most. How to make more money in real estate. For just $7, you can start a one week trial at Rebus University today. And what that means is $13,000 worth of real estate courses on how to make more commissions will be available to you for a dollar a day. It's all you can eat. Go in there and take them all if you can only seven bucks to start your seven day all access free trial go to future of real estate training.com these courses are guaranteed to get you more listings more leads and more commissions future of real estate training.com or just text the word trial to 444 999 that's t-r-i-a-l to 444 nine 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 and the crazy part is this is sometimes pat you're going to get the nope nothing's changed sometimes you're going to get the ghost aka nothing sometimes you're going to get yeah i need to sell now call me tomorrow and the thing with a pay-per-click game is it's a numbers game um at, at some extent of 
finding those four to five percent. So it's asking a question like that. And then basically every 45 to 60 days, it's going to follow up in a very similar manner. Asking the big key here is, are, have your plans changed at all? That's the key word to get them to um, reach back out to us in some way, shape or form. Okay. That's it. Right? Have your plan changed. So would you, so like you could literally send that text. Mm-hmm. Any change of plans? Yeah. Absolutely. Question mark. Exactly. And, and I would say this, the shorter, the better. I think the biggest thing, the biggest flaw I've seen in so many people in real estate is I think sending information is value to people. Mm-hmm. And, and the, the truth is, is that that's what Google exists for now. Mm-hmm. The, the yes. relationship. So is, do you always ask a question on the text? Every single time. I, and I and is not. the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth test the, the text the same thing? Any change of plans? It, yeah, except written slightly differently. Heck, some of them were like, hey, Pat, you know the drill. Have your plans changed at all? So it's just alternating versions of the same question. And again, sometimes it means, nah, man, nothing's changed or nothing or go screw yourself. <laughs> you know, and again, sometimes that happens. But we get a lot of people where the timing's right. Because here's how the thing. Often, how uh, often should I be sending these automatic texts? I would say 45 to 60 days, you know, two months, at least every two months. Send something. And there are a lot of CRMs you're saying that have this feature. Yeah, lots of them. I, I would say we've seen a big, a lot, a big push between the big CRMs. Um, we've used Commission Zinc. Um, I know like Sierra has it, Boomtown, they have automatic and drip texting basically where you can put someone on that plan and then you set it and forget it. And that's the big key, Pat, is set it and forget it. Because you're What's wrong with putting it. everybody who, who, who you get their cell number, yep. who you don't meet with sure. in this system? What's wrong with that? Uh, well, I, I would say there's actually nothing wrong with it because even the people that tell me that they weren't interested, period, Pat, they're going to get roughly the same thing. Hey, Pat, I know we had spoke a little while back and you said you weren't interested in buying or selling a home anytime soon. I just wanted to follow up and see if your plans have changed at all. So we're sending these things to basically everybody um, skimming that net. Um, the only thing we won't do is if you, uh, I say there's two types of rejection. There's the passive rejection, aka, yeah, I'm not really interested, which is fine. I'm going to reach back out to that person. Then there's the, you never reach out to me again. And obviously it usually includes some other words and you can uh, use your brain on that. <laughs> um, and those people, right, right, right. we're going we're gonna to cut off the list. There's really, I describe leads when they reject us in the two different types. There's people that put in, in a compost pile and then there's people that put in the trash. And, and we try to never put people in the trash unless I have zero intention of ever reaching out to them again. Fascinating, fascinating. I love that. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so let's talk about this debate that you've had uh, with a couple other people who um, are saying, mm-hmm. um, you know, for, for, you know, make your calls. You've got to make calls. You've got to pick up the phone and call. You've got to call. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're saying, no, don't call. People don't pick up calls. Sure. Um, I can't tell you, honestly, how many – People, I've several people in the last, and, and these, these are agents mm-hmm. um, that I've called that said, um, thank you for calling. Best way to reach me is text. And then they won't say, um, I don't listen to messages. But the, when, it, when after it goes, it goes, this voicemail is currently full. <laughs> so, so clearly it's purposely, like, like mm. you don't let your voicemail, you got to have 45 <clears throat> minutes of, of messages, by the way, in order for your voicemail to be full. So it's almost mm. like you need to turn on the radio and leave yourself a message for 45 minutes to make yeah. that come on. Mm-hmm. You either have to be massively unorganized or you're doing mm. it on purpose, right? Yeah, exactly. 100%. So, 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 um, so, so that shows me that, yeah, I mean, that person's like, why didn't you text me? Right. Yeah. Like, why didn't you text me? So, so talk to me about what your feelings are on this. So uh, it, it's really weird because when I came into this game, texting was basically a, a non-component, to be honest. When I came into it five years ago, uh, texting tech was just being created so you could automatically drip text leads um, and just starting to be utilized. Um, here, here's the fact as we ran our numbers, Pat. And this is what I tell you. If Jim, my top eye saver, would be in here with us right now, he would tell us that we're having to make more and more phone calls to reach less and less people. 
And I'm not saying phone calls, the outbound call is dead. I'm making the argument that what we're seeing is it is dying. And here's why, in my opinion, we really have been trying to dig into this. I think I'm a, I'm a firm believer that communication just takes place via different mediums. And if you've seen with email, right, email is a very um, clustered medium, aka most people have two emails. They have one they really use, and then they have their spam account. Almost everybody has something like this. And if I know I'm going to get spam, aka if I'm signing up on a website, I'm going to give you my fake email that I don't use. What we saw happen this year um, with the election cycle was robocalls are at the highest levels we've ever seen. And robocalls is noise in the phone call medium. And mm -hmm. what it's causing consumers to do is to say, I'm not going to answer my phone. With caller ID, with our phones, people are only now answering their phone if they recognize the number. What you're yeah. seeing a lot of times is, oh, don't know the number. It's probably another political call. Um, another um, sales call, another robocall, hang up. Right? It's, it's, and, and the big thing is this, put yourself in their shoes. They don't want to commit themselves because if they answer that call, it's a commitment to something, whether it's a commitment to they have to reject you, which people don't like doing, actually, by the way, especially high S's, which is the majority of the population. They don't like confrontation. Or they don't want to commit to, now we're going to do a political no, survey. Annoying, you know? Yeah, and, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, there's no value there for the consumer. No. So it's just that noise has caused people to filter it out. Um, what's great about texting is everyone reads their text. If you were to pull out your phone right now, Pat, I bet you have almost no unread text messages. Yeah, yeah. No, very right. Minimal. Um, with email, we have tons traditionally, <laughs> especially real estate agents and people. You'll have oh, thousands. God. Yeah. Right? Um, but with texting, it's a very clear oh, this is my person that texted me. It's a medium that hasn't been drowned out yet, thank God. Um, another thing that's, I think, going to be in the future is, is possibly Facebook Messenger because most people's Facebook messages that they've received, it's not noise. It's a legit message that they're receiving. Well, yeah, but there's certainly ways. I, I know this firsthand because we, we do it, um, uh -huh. you know, with message bots and things uh -huh. that you can break through to that. Yeah, true. Um, and then, then you have these group texts that you're part of, these group messages you're part of on Facebook that, like, you're like, how the, how the hell did I get in there? Yeah, you <laughs> constantly get notified that this person left. Yeah, um, oh, yeah. <laughs> True. Yeah, absolutely. I think here's what I want someone to invent, and maybe this already exists. You tell me if it's if it doesn't. Mm -hmm. An app or some way that I could set my phone so that mm -hmm. the call won't even go through unless it's someone in my phone book. Mm. I haven't heard of such a thing, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's coming. <laughs> you know, because that's really, I mean, why not filter it from the beginning? Like if you yeah. if you're not in my phone book, you can't call me. I don't give a shit. Yeah, you know exactly. What I mean? Like I. It, and, and the funny thing is I think people are doing that. I think what you just described is what people are naturally doing anyways. Um, and the other big piece, man, is with a phone call is that, that could be a commitment that, uh, when I don't want to make it where texting is convenient. I mean, if we wanted to text right now, we do it on our own terms. And if I want to leave the conversation, I just don't text you back. Or if I want to continue the conversation, yeah, right. it takes place on my own terms. So Texting is convenient for people. Um, I always put myself, my, my rule pad is I always put myself in the shoes of the consumer because that's ultimately what's going to drive anything we do in business is what's best for the consumer and phone calls. Well, yeah. I mean, and I'm not, I'm not in the real estate. Like I, I haven't sold a house in 15 years. So, yeah. no, so I'm not, you know, I'm really more of a podcaster and investor now. So I could say that, but I think for most agents listening, yeah, you really can't say that. Or you could have two phones is the key. Yeah, um, true. One like one, one like that, and one that's business. So let's, let's shift gears. Let's go high cool. level now. I want to talk about ISAs, inside sales agents. Um, you know, any, any big team or any decent team that is um, doing big numbers now has an inside sales agent for the same exact reason that you said, because you know, um, if, if you put somebody in charge of, you know, that job, they're going to be great at that job. It's not a secondary job. It's a primary job. Yes. How do I hire a good ISA? It's my favorite question to answer. 
Um, so we're going to start here, and, and there's going to be a gift included with the, this podcast that people can get, and it's going to be all about the most important question we can ask when we're hiring an ISA, and we'll get to that in a moment. Um, I will say this. The, the, biggest, the biggest thing that matters in this when you're hiring an ISA is people need to understand that this role cannot be contained to an eight-to-five job. You cannot go and hire someone that sat in a uh, phone, uh, you know, bank and, and just dialed away from eight to five and then checked out at five o'clock. You can't do that in this role. And here's why, Pat, we just talked about how leads are texting, right? And let's envision this. Envision this. If you were to follow my ISAs, this is literally what it looks like to be in their shoes. Because so I think that's important for everybody on this call to understand is what is an ISA actually doing when you're going to hire an ISA? is from eight to five, they're working the inbound and outbound. So they're calling people, they're texting people. Now, what do you think happens when people get off work at 5.30, 6 o'clock, Pat? They, what, they shut the phone down or? Well, they look at it, right? It, let's say most people are working eight to five. Oh, I see, I see, right? I see. So I get off work at shut down during the day and they open it up and bing, 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 bing. Bing, 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 right? And then what happens is you see that. And if you see that text sitting there, you might respond, and again, it's a numbers game. You're going to text back at 5.36 o'clock. Oh, I see where you're going with this, right? Yeah. yeah. AK, the, the ISA rule can't be confined to the 8 to 5 block. It's not possible because you do the work to create the conversations, but the reality is, is that an ISA must be willing to inconvenience their lives to respond to leads on their terms. So the ISA, that's a big mistake that people make is they make an ISA, they go, look, you're a nine to five person. I've seen people do that. You know, um, you're a nine to five, you're a regular employee like the rest of them. And then and that's not it, right? You're almost better off saying, look, you know, don't come in because um, I don't want you to waste an hour between 1030 and 1130 on a Tuesday morning because nobody's going to be calling. So, you know, just be ready at, at 915 tonight. You know, I mean, in case somebody texts. It, it's, it, that's exactly what's happening. Um, in, in our world, our ISAs work in office, and I like to describe it like this, in office from 8 to 5. And our ISAs, they, they get paid a very small salary. It's basically, yeah. honestly, just above minimum wage. Where I, our ISAs are, are compensated is they earn a piece of the commission on every deal that closes. We pay nothing on appointments. They get 5% on buy side and then 10% on the sell side as a as Really? 5% of the total commission? 5% uh, of the total commission. And, and 10%. And, on, you see, you see on those, are big, those are big. 10% mm -hmm. of a listing, you know, could be a grand, right? Easily. Um, Absolutely. So, mm -hmm. so, yeah, those are good commissions. They are. And, and that's the thing is a lot of people have viewed this role, Pat, as less than. And I would view this role as the thing in your business, probably the most crucial piece of your business. Because think about it. Um, in my world, my top ISA, Jim, brought in 100 and I want to say 60 deals this year. Last year, it was 205, give or take. That's 205 deals that he's touched in our world that he brought in for a team. By the way, those commission splits come out, out of the agent's cut. What did he make? Uh, over 100k i don't know the exact over 100 grand so over 100. here's the yeah. thing and, and carrie shell does this brilliantly what she uh -huh. says is you know she her isa on uh, isas on the hierarchy of the team are higher than the agents oh, yeah um and um and then so the way she creates that is the isas are allowed mm -hmm. to choose which agent they give the lead to same and, it, and it's certainly based on, you know, if Franklin, you know, calls people back better or closes or gets me paid, yep. if I trust that Franklin's not going to screw this up. I'm giving the deal to Franklin and she lets him do it. Mm -hmm. And we do the same thing. And that's actually, that's self-guiding because Jim wants, gets paid on the closing, right? Yeah. So he doesn't want to give the leads. Really what it comes down to, it, to describe it maybe differently, is our ISAs aren't just producers or managers. They're the database mm -hmm. managers. Yes, they indeed. have every right to give it and take it away from our agents. Um, because if an agent doesn't do what they're supposed to do, by the way, it's pretty simple. Conversion always comes down to doing the small things. And when an agent doesn't do those small things that we know they're supposed to be doing, our ISAs have full discretion to call them on it, to punish them, to take away because that's the only way I know how to um, give a consequence to somebody. I've always described it like this. I have, I have a five-year-old, right? 
And if my five-year-old is doing something wrong and there's no natural consequence for it, and I just let my five-year-old continually doing the wrong thing over and over again, I'm an enabling parent at that point. Yes, indeed. Be, and, and we, a lot of us, are afraid to go and call our agents out on the bad habits that they're doing. And when they do that, everybody loses. Lower conversions, a loss for you, the agent, the team, the ISA, your admin, and more importantly, to the consumer. Because most people provide really great service, and when you don't convert them, they go and work with somebody else. And it's a lose, lose, lose all the way across the board. So we got to hold them accountable. And that's definitely something our ISAs do. Plenty of people make a decent living selling real estate, but how many manage to make millions to become a millionaire? Imagine how much more profitable your business would be if you had the chance to learn from someone who actually made their millions selling real estate. Rebus University instructors know what it takes to build a highly successful, highly lucrative real estate business because they've done exactly that. These self-made real estate millionaires spent years in the trenches identifying exactly what works in today's markets. And that's exactly what they teach. Right now, we're running a seven-day trial on Rebus University's all-access package. For just $7, you can get access to every course. Every millionaire real estate instructor, there's over 40 of them. 40 millionaire real estate instructors that Rebus University has to offer. You have access to all of them. To start your seven day free trial for only seven bucks, go to futureofrealestatetraining.com. That's futureofrealestatetraining.com. Or text trial, T R I A L, to 444 999. That's trial to 444 999. Hey, real estate agents and rock stars. If you're getting value out of the content in this episode, make sure you like the video and subscribe to this channel. Also, click the little bell icon to be notified about upcoming episodes. And I would also love it if you left a comment and shared the most impactful tips and tactics you've learned from the knowledge shared in this episode or even maybe make a suggestion requesting a topic of what you'd like to learn in future episodes. I welcome any feedback below. Now, back to the episode. But with that, Pat, to, to really kind of put a bow on this, the reality is the role it is a lifestyle. And many people go and glamorize this role. Oh, well, let me slow you down on that. I want everybody to, to, to let that sink in. The role... Mm -hmm. is a lifestyle yes sir just like an agent right this is normal when we hire an agent they know what they're getting into they know that on a saturday they may have to go to showings for three four hours and isa knows that on nights and weekends they may have to call a lead they yes. may have to text a lead right and my isas are traditionally working about 50 60 hours a week is what i generally say during busy season, because we're in a very seasonal market, it's like negative, or it's probably zero degrees out today, give or take. Uh, nobody wants to buy or sell a home. Right? You're in North Dakota, right? Fargo, right? Yeah, Fargo, North Dakota. So it gets chilly. And we literally, our market, just as a general rule, we sell half as many houses in the winter as we do in the summer. General mm. rule. Um, it's probably wow. not exact. But that means you're probably doing double the work in those summer months. And that's what our ISAs sign up to do. So the biggest issue is people create unrealistic expectations. They say, hey, Pat, come in. It's a nine to five job. You can have all the success in the role. And then what happens is you come in and you quickly learn, first off, you're going to get rejected all the dang time. Uh, you're going to get kicked in the face. Um, secondly, if you want to have success in this role, it's all encompassing, especially with texting. That, that's the biggest thing, Pat, is if you don't text the lead back at 7.30 at night, I guarantee they're never looking at lead or looking at homes on one website therefore they're not just your lead they're somebody else's lead as well so, yeah so if you have an isa guys and they're giving out a, a, an office voicemail you know that mm -hmm. they're terrible right? right you know that's that's a bad system correct yeah you you got to be engaged in the conversation which is why we pay them which is in fargo the average income is probably like forty eight fifty thousand dollars so our top ISAs, or all of our ISAs, once you've been in the role for a year, you'll make $100,000. That's just what it's built to be. And you should be rewarded because this is a lifestyle, just like an agent. Um, 
I like to jokingly say an ISA needs to have the opportunity to make agent money is kind of what I say. Yeah, absolutely. They need to have an opportunity to make agent money. And in, in, some, some, in some instances, maybe several, especially with the newer agents, they're going to make more. Oh, yeah. And that, that's what we saw happen, Pat, was when I came in, I started doing this. And, and I, I came from a political background, <laughs> which is really funny. Um, and if there's one thing that where you get rejected more than sales, I promise you it's knocking doors and making phone calls. <laughs> yeah, right. campaigns. Um, you got a 50 50 chance, right? <laughs> Oh, man, you have no clue. Well, really, <laughs> you know what that taught me, Pat, was, was something that, that, and this is maybe a good take, uh, place to take this call, is I learned one really great lesson when I was out working on political campaigns, was if I went up to somebody that was of the opposing party and I knocked that door and I said, hey, vote for my candidate, what do you think would happen? I'd get booed off their doorstep, right? <laughs> Except with a lot worse than booze. Um, what I learned was if I wanted to potentially inspire people to vote for my candidate that were opposite of me, that had their wall up. What I had to do was I had to find out what mattered to you, Pat, in this election. And then what I could do is I could see, is there a common ground between what you need, want, and desire mm -hmm. and a candidate that I'm working for, that I believe in? Is there a common ground? Yes. And the crazy thing was it worked extremely well. Mm -hmm. um, our district way overperformed. We elect some people that in that district had never been elected before. But then I came and started working for Eric, and guess what? I was handed a script book, and I learned quickly that if I call and just try to convince you to work with us, it was the same thing as me trying to get people to vote for the opposing candidate. Their walls were up. What I did instead, Pat, and my whole philosophy is if I want to influence someone, I need to find out what's already influencing them. And I stole that from Tony Robbins because he's obviously way smarter and bigger than I am. If you want to influence one, someone, you need to find out what's already influencing them. Damn. And that kind of goes in line with what Facebook is doing and all that, right? I mean, oh, yeah. just, you buy ads based yep. on what something is already influencing someone. So you might as well double down on it. Correct. Exactly. So you know, something like that, but better. Yeah, exactly. And really what happens is with, I think the problem with internet leads for most people, the PPC leads in this industry is, people's walls are sky high when you first reach out, right? Because they don't know who you are. They were just on a random website. They're so deathly afraid you're going to be some slick salesperson that's trying to get them to do something they don't want to do. And what happens when you ask questions and find out what matters to them is innately trust is built. And mm -hmm. our conversations, when you listen to them, is literally me digging into their why. What's their need, want, or desire? That's what my ISA specialize in. That's what I coach. That's what I train. It's finding out what's influencing someone. Because you know what becomes really easy when you do that? Leveraging that to say, well, here's how we can help. Mm -hmm. And offer a solution. And actually, you know, half the time, um, people will close you and say, well, what can you do to help me? Because you put in the time to find out what matters to them. So that's our whole approach. In that's short. awesome. I love it. I love it. So let's talk about your free <clears throat> gift here, Robbie. Yes. <laughs> um, so I, I included the free gift, the most important question to ask when hiring an ISA. And it goes in line with how I talk about the biggest mistake is people glamorize this role. They say, you know, they, they basically give unrealistic expectations to what the role will be. So in that, you, you'll notice that in, in every interview process, we always ask our ISAs uh, a question. And, and what we basically do is we explain three different options. And really what I'm going to do in it, and we'll have a role play this in a second, and you'll be the candidate, and then I will be the person potentially hiring you, is I describe an admin role, an agent role, and an ISA role, but I don't put a label on it. So I go like this, uh, and literally I'm just going to role play this. Uh, well, Pat, I want you to answer this question for me, all right? And I'm going to describe three different options for you, Pat, and I want you to tell me which option is the most appealing to you. They're basically going to be roles that you might want to work in. And I want you to tell me immediately, you don't get to think about it, you need to tell me which option is the most appealing to you. Is that fair, Pat? Sure. Awesome. And then the big thing I want you to do, Pat, is I want you to tell me why immediately afterwards. All right? Okay. All right. So option A looks like this, Pat. It is a very steady eight to five job. The great thing about it is you know your hours. When you check out of work at five o'clock, you get to go home, you get to kick your feet up, you don't have to do any work, you don't have to worry about working outside the eight to five job. Very okay. predictable, very steady. Um, with this role, you're traditionally gonna make you know, 30 to $50,000, give or take. 
Okay, that's okay. option A. Option B looks like this, Pat. Um, it is very unpredictable. You are traditionally going to work 60 plus hours per week. The great part is, is you're going to work directly with people. This is for very social, gregarious. You, you're a people person. This is the role for you. You're going to work directly with clients. The other cool piece for you, Pat, is there is, without a doubt, if you're willing to put the work in, the opportunity to make six figures. Okay, that's option B. Make sense? Sweet. Okay. All right, good. And then option C, Pat. Option C uh, looks like this. Um, it's a role where you're going to sit in, in a box and converse with people on the phone and text with people all day long. Um, you are going to get limited face-to-face -face interaction with your team and with, with people, with clients. But the great part is, um, and you're going to work 50, 60 hours a week in this role, the great part is there is the opportunity to earn six figures when you put the work in. Okay, so option A, option B, option C. Which one's the most appealing to you, Pat? Mm, I kind of like B. Okay, why B? Why does B matter to you, Pat? Why does it appeal to you? I like how you said six figures. Okay, six figures. All right, obviously option C you can make six figures. Why was option C not as appealing to you, Pat? You know, I didn't like the, the uh, part about I'm not going to really talk to anybody or meet anybody or have any interaction. Okay. So tell me more about that, Pat. What, what, what do you mean by that? Why is that a concern for you? I just, I just need energy, you know? Okay. Are you somebody that gets a lot of energy when you're face-to-face -face with other human beings? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So here, here's exactly what it is, right? You're somebody, if I said, Pat, you're going to sit in a box kind of like mine that's like, you know, eight by eight. You're going to make calls and text leads all day long and almost never converse with somebody. That's probably not appealing to you, right? It's not something that's going to give you life. Right. And you're, you're at higher risk to, to burn out. This yes. is what I've learned about socially gregarious people. First off, that what you just told me is this ISA role probably isn't a fit for you. That's yeah. what I just heard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're not bad. You're not a bad person. This is just not the right probably fit. Probably be a, a, maybe a decent buyer agent. Yeah, exactly. Exactly my point, right? So we're identifying. Now, I don't put a label on it because I don't want them to know they're applying for an ISA role because then they're going to pick that every time. So yes. I describe the role without saying the name of the role. And the funny thing is, is you notice that I didn't just let you get away with your answer. Yeah, I, I know. I do it, right? Um, I was finding out was, <laughs> I was trying to influence you by finding out what's already influencing you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, good one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and what happens is, Truly, when you dig in deeper, people can't fake their answers. And you'll start separating, that's not a good fit for you. So I'll say this, option A, if somebody says option A, this is not the role for them. Forget period. about it. Yeah, right. Forget about it. It Admin. doesn't mean they're bad. I, exactly. Admin, support. I describe it like this. My wife is fantastic. She's unbelievable. Um, she would die in some type of role like this. She's not built for it. Um, and she's a school counselor. She found a role where she gets to do what she loves, and it's in her confines, right? So it's just, it's, it's making sure that we align the people's needs, wants, and desires with these roles, uh, aka what I do with leads all day long. It's the same thing. If somebody says option B, it's usually, if you would have said it's strictly because of money, that you could potentially be an ISA. But if you're socially gregarious, you want that face-to-face -face time, you're probably going to burn out because you don't get any of it. And then yeah, secondly, right. traditionally, you don't like rejection. Yes. And the best lead converters only convert at 5% on pay-per-click leads, aka 95% of people are going to tell you no. And you're going to take that a lot more um, as a kick in the face than somebody that maybe isn't as social. Mm -hmm. No, so. 100%. I love it, dude. I love it. I mean, yeah. you're saving yourself a lot of time in the future. You know oh, what I yeah. mean? You're saving yourself a lot of time. And people do just go out there and hire anybody for jobs oh. nowadays. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. You know, I, I, this is good stuff. Now, are you have? Did you have this in a PDF format that yes, you can sir. give our listeners? Okay, I do. Yep, I. Uh, you, you guys will get it, and then you know, if you guys have any questions, if you if you have any thoughts on it, if you want some to dig deeper, you know, reach out to me. That's what I'm here for. That's awesome. So, guys, I'm going to put this on uh, hybendigital.com backslash Robbie T. And here's how you spell it. It's got two B's and a Y, right? <laughs> R O B B Y and a T. R O B B Y and a T. <laughs> Hymendigital.com backslash Robbie T. Um, and of course, I'll always put it in the agent success toolbox, which is on hymendigital.com backslash toolbox. Or you can just simply text the word toolbox to 444 That's toolbox to 444 And uh, you'll not only get Robbie T's uh, three-part question on how to hire ISAs, 
but you'll get a, a ton of other items of utility that uh, guests have brought over time all in one giant box. Uh, Robbie, this has been a blast, buddy. Uh, Thanks, brother. You no, know, put on your earmuffs, zero degrees. <laughs> I'm not happy about that. And don't, <laughs> don't envy you at all, but uh, I'm sure you're used to that. But maybe if I ever make my way out to Fargo, I'll definitely look you guys up and we can uh, right. get together and break some bread. Sounds good, brother. Thank you for having me on, and uh, thanks again for your time. Thank you so much for tuning in to Real Estate Rockstars. If this free content is giving you a ton of value, I want to ask a small favor in return. I need you to pull out your pointing finger and hit the subscribe button. Yes, hit subscribe, please. The more subscribers that we get on Real Estate Rockstars, the better guests are attracted to the shows. We'll get more guests from the top companies, from the top teams, and even more celebrity guests like Robert Kiyosaki and Barbara Corcoran. Also, if you're not a member of our free Facebook group, go to Real Estate Rockstars Radio right on Facebook and join the conversation. I'm on there myself on FaceTime Lives. And we have a lot of communications and questions about the show. And I'd love to see you there. And it's free. People ask me all the time, where am I on social media? I'm real easy to find. Just type in my name. My IG is I am Pat Hyben. It is blowing up on Instagram, adding tons of subscribers. And I'm on there probably twice a day. So definitely follow me on Instagram as well as everywhere else. Thanks again for listening and keep rocking.